Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. My name is Bob Polensky, Master of Wine. Today's topic is covering one of the greatest wines on the planet. We're talking about Brunello di Montalcino. We're gonna get into several aspects about what makes this wine so special, why it has amazing longevity for aging. We're also gonna get into some of the better vintages that are currently in the market, along with some top producers that you can search out as well. As for the last point with the producers, that'll all be listed down in the description below. And then finally, the video is going to wrap up with a tasting of a 1993 Brunello di Montalcino Reserva from one of my favorite producers. Now, for just a bit of background information on these wines, the wines are sourced from the slopes around the ancient fortified town of Montalcino, which is located a bit south of Siena in Tuscany. The wines are produced from 100% Sangiovese, or what's locally called Brunello. This is a very old grape variety. It has all sorts of naturally occurring genetic mutations or clones. The one that's the focus for Brunello is called Sangiovese Grosso. So you have the local name of Brunello along with the name of the town called Montalcino. You put the two together and there you have the name for this particular wine. Sangiovese in its many variations is the most widely planted grape variety in Italy. It's responsible for some of the very best wines from the country, and it's also responsible for some of the most thin, pale, soulless wines you could ever come across. It's long been used as a volume producer, and when that happens, a lot of the character, a lot of the appeal for the grape variety is simply lost. But when it's planted in the right place and the attention to detail is there, the height can be just phenomenal, and that's what you have with Brunello di Montalcino. Now, I do like the fact that Brunello di Montalcino is made from a single grape variety that is indigenous to Italy. It helps to retain that unique character that's just so special about this wine. And if you compare it to what's happening further north in Chianti and its various subzones, there are some other grape varieties that can be worked into the blends to a, a small level. Things like Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon. These types of grape varieties tend to just decimate the style of Sangiovese, and I think a lot of the uniqueness of those wines is simply lost. If you're enjoying this video, please do hit the like button. Also consider subscribing. These things really help this channel. The region is marked by a significant diurnal temperature range. And by that, what I mean is the high temps during the day, the low temps at night have a significant difference. And what this allows is a few things. One is, it's a long, slow ripening process. But beyond that, you get wines that retain a lot of the aromatics. The wines tend to have a brighter, fresher character. Also, the acidity level is maintained as well. And again, that just contributes to the brightness, the freshness of the wine. In many cases, that acidity forms the backbone of the wine. You see this scenario play out in a lot of other places around the world where you have grape varieties that are based on having pronounced aromatics along with good acidity levels. In some places in Montalcino, you'll still see the very old practice of having grapevines and olive trees planted in very close proximity to one another. With the objective of this is to create competition, to lower the yields, and to improve the overall quality. Through the 1970s and 1980s, there was a gush of investment that came into the region. And in the 1990s is when the real renaissance happened for Brunello di Montalcino. At that time, there was a much more uh, attention to detail in the vineyards, a lot more precision in terms of how the wines were made, and there was a massive leap in quality. So even though this is a very old region, it's really only within the last 30 years or so that you saw this quantum leap in quality. Today, there's over 200 producers of Brunello di Montalcino. And over the last 10 years or so, I think the quality has just been fantastic, but there is one issue that comes to mind that I find a bit troubling. It's now possible to find Brunello de Montalcinos that'll have alcohol levels that'll be pushing 15%. It's simply too high for a wine with this sort of structure. These are not wines built to be as big as an old Chrysler Newport. They're more built on aromatics, they have more delicacy, and the balance, I feel, is just off when the alcohol is that high. So keep that in mind when you're out shopping for it. In terms of wine style, this is what you can expect when you try a Brunello de Montalcino. The color of the wine is not gonna be uber deep. It's gonna be a medium red color. Oftentimes, there's gonna be some fade as you get out to the meniscus on the glass. Also, the acidity is gonna be fairly high. The tannin levels are gonna be really solid. 
It's a wine that has a tremendous amount of aromatics. Oftentimes you'll find some sour cherry characters, some dried uh, rose petal characters quite common. I often find uh, the aroma of clove in a lot of these wines, especially as they develop some age. But the aromatic intensity and breath is just incredible when the wine is spot on. Currently, there are two vintages that are absolute standouts, and both of these are just making their way into the marketplace now. Look for the 2015s. There have been several producers from the region that have called it the best vintage they've ever experienced, but the wines have weight, intensity, there's good tannin structure, the acidity is there. All the telltale signs are in place for wines that are gonna have fantastic longevity, and maybe just a slight tick below that would be the 2016s. But again, you're gonna be hard pressed to go wrong with either one of those vintages. But do keep in mind the alcohol level. If you're seeing that level in any of the wines tick up to around 15%, you may look for a different option. And again, this all ties to finding wines that are gonna be in balance. And that alcohol of 15 just seems a bit high for this type of wine. Every now and then I'll hear someone making a comparison of Brunello de Montalcino to some of the wines from Burgundy. I don't get it. I think they're night and day difference. The Brunello di Montalcino has a much different structure in terms of acidity. It has more tannin. The aromatic profile is very different. So if you happen to hear that at some point, don't buy into it. It's not true. And now for the tasting of the old Brunello. I have a bottle of 1993 uh, Tenuta La Fuga. Brunello di Montalcino Reserva. I've had this wine for about 25 years. Uh, 93 is a very solid vintage. They actually, in the decade of the 90s, there were many fantastic vintages for Brunello di Montalcino. This one's rock solid. Uh, this is the only bottle I have of this particular wine, so I'm, I'm really curious about to see how this shows. The cork was in very good condition. You see just a, a tiny bit of seepage up the sides of the cork, but it's sound, it's, uh, it's not soft, not spongy. There was no sign of anything leaking. All very good. The fill level in the wine was also very good as well. So by all indications, the condition of this wine is gonna be very solid. Looking at the, the color, there's good density. Uh, there's very little amber tinge as you get out to the rim. So it, it's very healthy looking. The core is still rather deep. The aromatics, sour cherry, uh, black olive, there's a clove-like, but almost more of a like an Asian five spice character to it. Definitely much more tertiary notes than anything else. There's no surprise in that, but very good aromatic intensity. But beyond just intensity, there's also a breadth to it. It seems almost expansive in terms of, of aromatics. And keep in mind, it's only been open a short time, so I'm curious to see how this develops over, over a couple of hours. Oh, wow. Okay. On the palate, the wine is, is very soft, but it has tremendous presence to it. The front palate, very round, rich, ripe. Mid palate has good intensity. There's a lot of length on the back palate as well. Uh, there's certainly some acidity there, which is, is typical for this type of wine. There's still some tannin. So while this wine is showing a good amount of tertiary notes, it's certainly not over the hill. There's a lot of structure, a lot of concentration. I think this wine could actually go a few more years with, with no trouble. This is fantastic. Uh, I'm really happy with this wine, except for one thing. I wish I had more than just this single bottle. Thanks so much for staying to the end of this video on Brunello di Montalcino. It's the greatest expression of Sangiovese that you'll ever find. The wines are definitely worth searching out. If you're looking for something to sell her, it's a fantastic candidate. Look forward to seeing you again. Until next time, cheers. Hey everyone, I'm back just for a quick bit here. I've retasted the Brunello after it's been open for about four hours. The aromatics on this wine have just exploded. Amazing. It's got so much intensity, so much nuance. It's complex. It's so interesting. Absolutely love the way it smells. On the palate, it's got length, complexity, intensity. Tick all the boxes. This is just a fantastic bottle of wine. Had to get that in just to let you know what's going on after a few hours of being open. Take care. Bye-bye.